just to just move into the audio selection of the hard off that I've just visited. I'm here in eastern Sapporo on the island of Hokkaido in the north of Japan, and I found one of the most unique places that I've ever been. A place that will sell a giant ten thousand dollar speaker set. I'm guessing the thing you need to know about Hokkaido, and something that I don't think I've stressed enough after walking through, I mean, it's been seven or eight stores now. Hokkaido is this huge place in the north of Japan. It's an island literally unto itself, and it's known as uh, Japan's agricultural capital, and so it has all of this space, which you don't usually get anywhere else in Japan, so I guess people just have the room in their houses for giant speakers. You don't see these anywhere else. You don't see these on the mainland. You only see them here. Now, I know you didn't come here for speakers, but I thought I'd just do a little bit of a different introduction before we go into one of the more impressive selections that I've ever seen at a hard off. And that's saying something. So we're gonna go to this, like, it's a PC engine paradise. Because here we've got a loose PC engine. This is the, the, the I, I can't remember what it's exactly called, but it's the base uh, system and it has a, um, well, hold on, it's got an AV booster, which is interesting. Okay, I didn't know there was an AV booster. So that way you can hook up your core system right to your TV using the, the component, it's either composite or component. <laughs> I can't, I always flip the red, the RGB and the yellow, white, red. This is yellow, white, red. Um, we've also got the uh, CD systems here. We've got one going for 150 bucks. And I can't tell why that's going for 150 bucks and why this one here is going for just 100. I can't really tell the difference. Perhaps someone who knows more about PC engines can tell me why. And then we've got a PC engine duo. This is going for $250. And it's really something special. I mean, that's, I mean, man, even in Tokyo, I think that probably cost you about 500 bucks. What would be even more expensive is the PC Engine Duo R. It's a beautiful machine in good condition. The box is in great condition and it's going for about $300. And that's pretty good. That would absolutely be about 50,000 yen in Tokyo. That'd be a five mon system, $500, I mean. Then we've got Virtual Boy. That's going for about $180 complete. We also have a, wow, Rob, I mean, the box is in good condition, the gyro, the block set is in good condition, but 150 bucks for Rob. That's a bit steep, to be honest. And now we come to a very unique Sega Saturn. This is called the High Saturn. It's black, it's a little purple with little, you know, pinkish purple accents. And now it's going for $150, and that's, and there's a good reason why, and it's because the, the High Saturn, which was made by Hitachi, is not a very common Sega Saturn. We'll actually go look at some common Sega Saturns in a moment, but not before we miss this 1999 Die Hawks beautiful orange, translucent orange and black Nintendo. And it comes with two controllers and looks in good condition. This is going for $150. This is also a very rare N64. I mean, I've seen it cheaper somewhere else but you, it's not something you see every day, and if I didn't already own it, I might be thinking about it, but it's 150 bucks. That's real steep. We also have a limited edition Pepsi Nintendo DS. Now, it's going for $50, and that's because, and it's got, it's got writing that indicates that it was part of a Pepsi cam, like commercial campaign, and it was only limited to a thousand of these exist in Japan. We've also got a, uh, a Sega Game Gear going for 60 bucks, which is pretty good. Game Gears tend to be kind of rare in Japan. Uh, you don't find them too often, and so that's why they're a bit expensive. I don't know what the capacitor situation on that Genesis is, is and I'm not really willing to find out. <laughs> and then we've got a cheap uh, AV Famicom for 65 bucks. That's real good. I want to make sure, I just want to double check and make sure I'm not missing anything because this is loaded. We've got Wonder Swans. Not Wonder Swan, not Wonder Swan Colors, not Wonder Swan crystal, Crystals, just Wonder Swans. We have a Donkey Kong Game & Watch. We can look and look at that. Oh, wow, and then the high, so this is the high Saturn. 
and then something that you could add on in order to watch video CDs. Remember kids, back before we had DVDs, we had video CDs. If you wanted to watch an episode of anime in probably sub 480i quality, you would need to get one of these cards. You need this Hitachi card to go into your high Saturn in order to watch that video. <laughs> That's what it was like. That's what it was like back in the 90s. And I want to do a quick stop off because I saw some pretty life changing games for me. These are these, if I had to define. I would say my middle, my time in middle school and my early time in high school, it would be with these two games. Now computer games, you don't see computer games in Japan all that often. Just because PC games actually tend to be associated with, uh, let's say, just say inappropriate adult content. But you do find these big box PC games every once in a while, especially at hard offs. And they will be expensive. Like, look at this. This is Worship Commander 3 by Koei. This is $250 for a PC game. We got, real, we got Railroad Tycoon and Railroad Tycoon 2 going for 35, like 20 bucks and 35 bucks. Okay, but more importantly, we have Rise of Nations going for $45. We even have this expansion, Thrones and Patriots. Oh my God. Man, I played this game a lot when I was a kid. I always loved playing as the British and just getting, I just love controlling the map. I just loved creating empires, and I loved playing as the British in Age of Empires too. Well, I guess, they, I, I think they probably called them the English at the time. But oh my god, I mean, and it's not like, these aren't, you know, these aren't the HD versions, people. This is the original shit. This is like, you're installing, I don't even know if you can install these games anymore, just because of how Windows works now. But oh, Rise of Nations, I haven't seen that, I haven't played Rise of Nations in years. I've played the HD of... Age of Empires. And this is even this is this isn't even the regular Age of Empires. This this is the expansion. Oh my god. And we do have a little Age of Mythology, but I, I don't care about that much, to be honest. I'm I'm not slighting you if you like Age of Mythology, but it's, I'm I'm an Age of Empires 2 kind of guy. And I feel, and I suspect a lot of you feel the same way. So on top of some amazing consoles and some amazing amazing PC games. Let's take a look at the software. We've got Final Fight Guy. This is a remake of the original Final Fight, which I'm a huge fan of. I've not played Final Fight Guy yet, but this came with a CD. This does not have a soundtrack CD included in it. It's noted on the uh, the price tag. It's maybe hard to see there, and I can't get an overhead view. But this is going for 60 bucks. I think if it had the CD, it'd be worth about $80. We've also got Secret. Of, we've got the sequel, The Secret of Mana. This is Seiken Densetsu 3 complete in box for $30. I actually highly recommend this game. Um, Square released recently a in Japan a pack that has Seiken Dead Sensu 1, 2, and 3. So Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana, and the sequel, the never released in America sequel. And maybe one day it'll come out in the States, and I really hope it does. We also have some Game Boy Advance SPs in pristine, uh, I'd say near mint condition, that are doing about $30 a piece. I also have an assortment of Famicom games, Mega Man X2 going for $15. We've got uh, Castlevania 4, that is $20. I think actually we've got the Super Super Double Dragon. Is that one? Oh, Return of Double Dragon. It's kind of hard to see. I'm trying to angle the camera so you can just bask in this. And man, I remember a day when Mega Man used to be $50, $60. But here, and the prices here I feel are slightly more expensive than what I would pay, but Mega Man at $30 is quite good. Indeed. Indeed quite good. I hope I'm not missing anything. Oh, we got GoldenEye for going for $35. It's pretty kind of expensive in Japan, and then there's, for some reason, <laughs> Beetle Adventure Racing is a hard to find uh, N64 game here, and so that's why it's going for $25. Even though Super Smash Brothers, which is the game that I think more people would actually want to play, it's going for like, like, <laughs> 15 bucks. Oh, excuse me. Anything else? Once again, we got Super Mario 2, which they called Super Mario USA in Japan. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got a complete Smash Brothers going for $20. Also, we got some cool old, um... I keep wanting to say LSD games, but I'm LCD. There we go, LCD, not LSD. <laughs> also got the mini, the mini uh, PlayStation. I love the design. I, you know, to be honest, I hate 
how the original PlayStation looks. But the mini PlayStation, I think it's maybe called the PSX, I can't remember, but that is beautiful. That's a beautiful, well-designed machine, if I do say so myself. I also remember when Xenoblade used to be $50, now it's gone down to $30, and I wonder if it's ever going to go back up. If we collecting becomes a thing, I'm, I would bet you anything that that might jump up in price. If they, if they never reprinted it. I don't know if they reprinted it or not. Let me see anything. Is this a, is this a shoot 'em up? Bought it to sold. Oh, wow, yeah. It is a shoot 'em up. Interesting. I've never seen this before. 40 bucks? Eh, it's a bit. Eh, some other time. <laughs> I've already spent too much on this trip. I can't, I can't be going by and snow. Uh, it's tempting. Uh, it's tempting. Very tempting. Then, wow. Look at all these boxed Super Nintendo games. Uh, you know, that's a. 10 bucks for Final Fantasy V, although it does not have the uh, the, the manual, so I don't know if I'd recommend it here. I'm gonna try something crazy. I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip the phone so that you can see. I'm hoping this comes out right and you can see all the cool games. We got Goemon, we got Bowerman 3, Super Mario Kart, we got Genealogy of the Holy War, Fire Emblem, $10. All of these seem to be about five, ten dollars We got Yoshi's Island, $5. Hold on, let's get the glare out of the way. Although nothing here is, um, nothing here is popping. They're fine games. They're perfectly fine games. Final Fantasy, they, yeah, they called Mystic Quest in Japan. They called it Final Fantasy USA. So we got Final Fantasy USA, and then down there we've got Super Mario USA in the pink. <laughs> and then, oh, wow, the Willow game. $10 if you want it in the box. It's a beautiful artwork. Look at that. Wow. It's, oh my god. That old artwork. It's incredible. Then we, oh, we come to some cool MSX games that Konami put out. Sky, it's Sky Jaguar. What does Sky Jaguar look, at, look like? Uh, yeah, it looks very well old. It looks quite old. <laughs> then let's finish up this section here we've got a complete Dreamcast for the relatively cheap, um, let's say $45. Um, that's a good price. I don't think I want to lug this all the way back with me, so I might buy it somewhere else, but $45 is a good price for a Dreamcast. Wish the controller was in slightly better condition. It's not as, uh, for some reason it's, it looks a little bit more yellowy than the console itself. And then here's some, this, is, this isn't even the original standard. Sega Saturn. This is a later release. In Japan, the original Saturn was a kind of grayish color. Then here we've got the white Sega Saturn going for $45. The condition on the left is much better than on the right, but here you can get them complete in box. We've also got some Xbox 360s. Wow, this is the most I've ever seen Xbox 360s. I don't know, they, apparently Microsoft was doing something right up in Hokkaido because it's the only place I've ever seen this many Xbox 360s. Oh yeah, and remember how they had a gun for the uh, for the Wii? Well, I mean, it's not necessarily a gun, but you know, this is what you would use with uh, Link's bow training. <laughs> Might need to pick this up someday. I wonder if these are going to be worth anything. Probably not. <laughs> Physical media is dying. <laughs> so let's go to the junk. What awaits us in the junk? Oh, you might be able to see it already, but we have the standard graveyard of fat PlayStations. My God, I, what is gonna happen to all of these systems? Like, are these just gonna sit here for an eternity? Like, I just, I love the fat PlayStation. It is like, I know it's huge, it's heavy, it's bulky, but just something about it to me, just maybe it's, maybe I'm just jealous of all the kids in middle school who had it. When I had, I had an N64 and then I went to the GameCube and then all of my friends had the PlayStation, PlayStation 2 and it just seemed so much like the future. And maybe that's the, the slim one. The slim one's too wonky, it's too janky for me. I like the fat, the fat one, it's tough. And here we, this is the original now, here we go. So you can see here, this is the original Sega Saturn with the gray and blue accents. And then we've got some chunk white Sega Saturns. They're going for about three bucks. These are five bucks. Yes. And over here and then some what was this? Oh, an ASCII uh, fighting stick. 
for the Sega Saturn, yes, you can tell from the, uh, the port input. And then the usual junk Super Famicom games. These are all going to be sports games. And if only like GameStop would start doing that, so then you can just get rid of all the, the the stuff that like nobody wants. Like what's what are people gonna do with these? What's gonna happen to them? Just remember just stuff. Just all kinds of stuff. And all kinds of controllers too. Like are, there's gotta be a way to clean these. Like that's I think the next million dollar retro gaming idea is to figure out what to do with all of this junk hardware and peripherals like all of these like there's got to be money to be made somehow by cleaning up these controllers because each of these are being sold for three dollars and i think a good a good controller goes for about ten dollars i don't know what to do with them but maybe one day i'll figure something out so anyway this has been jay contra coming to you from the east of sapporo in hokkaido japan saying thanks for watching Please save some of these PS2s and mahalo.